Hello, everybody. Welcome to our February CF Live, which is all about involvement. Uh, I'm Dan Beaver. I'm a member of our involvement group here at the CF Trust, uh, and I'm also a health researcher at the University of Sheffield. Um, it's great to, to have people on here on the call, and, and a big welcome to our panel, who are going to be speaking to us today about um, involvement that they've, they've been involved in in their work. Uh, so we've got David Ramsden, who's the, the Chief Executive of the Trust. We've got Ali and Paul from the Information and Support Team. We've got Gwyneth and Maria, who are going to be talking about involvement in the CF Storm uh, project. And we've also got Rob, who's going to be talking about involvement in uh, his bronchoscopy research. Uh, Sean, talking about involvement in his uh, pseudomonas detection research. And also Nicola, who's going to talk about um, the different involvement roles that she's had within the Trust and, and her experience of those. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to the, the other staff that are on the call here today. So uh, Nicola, who is supporting the, the admin of the event. Uh, and also to the trust involvement team. So Lorna, Louise, Maddie and Claire, and we've got Lorna, Louise and Claire uh, on, on the meeting tonight. So uh, thank you very much for, for all being here. Um, obviously, you mentioned the word involvement quite a lot. And I just want to, I guess, just give a bit of a brief overview as to what actually we mean by involvement, because there might well be some of you that are on the call um, tonight who, who aren't already aware of, of what that means. So. We're going to go and talk on about um, involvement in different research projects, and that's you know a, a definite way that we can see uh, the, the ways that people can get involved. But basically, we're we're looking at how members of the CF community can be involved in helping to shape the work of the trust and the research that goes on uh, for the benefit of our community. So there are opportunities within the trust to get involved uh, in working with researchers to support the development, delivery uh, and communication of their research projects. So the trust organizes lots of different um, sort of focus groups on different topics, but it's also broader than that as well. So you'll also hear tonight um, a few examples of involvement within um, the internal working of the trust as well. So in terms of um, some of the policy work, the different information resources that are, are set up as well. Um, and also, actually, the research that the, the trust identifies as being research that it wants to look to fund. So what are the research priorities for our community? And it's all about ensuring that the voice of those people um, that are living with cystic fibrosis or caring for those that are, are ultimately the centre of all the decisions that are made. Ultimately, that, that experience and that expertise um, is, is just so, so invaluable. Nobody knows CF like those people that have got that direct experience of it. Um, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to chair tonight. I've had lots of personal experience of delivering uh, involvement within health research, uh, and I've seen how valuable it's been to me when I've been working in um, different health conditions that I'm not familiar with, and also I've been on the other side of it as someone contributing to CF research, uh, and I've just considered it to be really, really uh, empowering as well. So just a little bit of housekeeping um, about tonight that um, obviously the event is being recorded, uh, questions can be posted in the chat throughout, so we're going to pick them all up at the end because we've got quite a lot of speakers to get through. Um, but if you do have specific questions, then pop them in the chat as we're going along. And if they're directed to a specific speaker, um, then maybe just drop their name alongside it as well so we know who to, uh, to pick it up with. Um, and on that note, I'm going to pass over to our first speaker for tonight, which is uh, David Ramsden, the Chief Executive of the Trust. Thanks, Dan. And I, I'm going to speak very briefly, but I really wanted to be part of this event just to say a few words and I think the overriding one is to thank everybody across the community who gets involved and uh, whether or not that's as a formal involvement representative part of the wider group which I think now numbers 300 or in fact anyone who's contributed their lived experience uh, of themselves or a family member or their wider insights into um, cystic fibrosis. I'm very clear, and Dan listed uh, a number of areas there, and they're reflected in some of the other talks later this evening. It's absolutely fundamental that everything that the Trust does is informed by and relevant for people with cystic fibrosis. And there is no better way of doing that than actually having a wide ranging and deep involvement activity in everything we do. And I just want to make it clear that it really is absolutely at the forefront of our thinking, particularly at a time when, um, well, I think it's reasonable to say there's never been a period of more dynamic change in people's experience um, of cystic fibrosis. And as we look to the future, it's really going to be really important that we have the insights that reflect 
uh, into the trust how we need to reshape our activities and refocus to make sure that we're still being relevant and delivering the impact that is essential for us to deliver um, our life unlimited. It would be remiss as we're still in February not to mention that last week was the mark the 60th anniversary of the first ever meeting of the trust and at that point last week and I know many of you are involved we were reflecting back on what had been achieved during that period but we are laser focused on what comes next and involvement is central to that. So I'm actually going to stop there and just simply say thank you. I know uh, um, many of you have given up your evening to join us and I really appreciate that. I hope others will be able to access, access this content at the time for them and I, that's convenient for them and I thank them. And I'd also like to thank uh, my team who work directly um, uh, with me. I'm proud to have you as colleagues and I look forward for us all working together uh, as we take things forward towards that life unlimited. So thank you and enjoy the next hour. Now I'm going to pass over to Ali and Paul from the information and support team. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my role is to develop information for all those affected by CF. And I'm going to talk to you about the role of involvement in a recent project of mine. And that was the update of our parent pack, which you can see on the screen. This booklet was originally published in 2015. It's often the first resource placed in the hands of parents and carers when their baby has their CF diagnosis. And it's when families often first find out about Cystic Fibrosis Trust. We identified that it was time we updated the resource given the changes in the CF landscape and families' experiences of CF today. As I'm sure you all appreciate, lots has changed in CF since 2015, the introduction of modulators being one. Here is the objective for that project, and I'll just leave that on the screen for you to read. So how are we going to approach this project? At the Trust, the information team puts the needs and wants of people affected by CF at the heart of all our resource development. So working with involvement was the first step. We needed to speak to parents and carers who could tell us what their experience of a CF diagnosis for their child had been like and what they wanted and needed in terms of information and support from us. With the support of the involvement team at the Trust, we set up informal focus groups with parents to identify the key themes and ask them what they thought of our current offering. In total, we've had engagement with 18 parents for this project, as well as CF healthcare professionals. We use these insights to help shape an outline of the content of the resource, including checking if the printed booklet format was still right for this audience. Parents told us that they wanted more information on how to manage their mental health and how to look after each other in the parental relationship and the wider family while going through this challenging time, all of which we've now included in the new booklet. But it also gave us insight into much more. As well as finding out what content parents wanted to see in the booklet, we also gave parents the opportunity to actually co-create the content with us. So there's a Q&A section written by parents as they think back to what were the most pressing and urgent questions they had around the time of their child's diagnosis. They also talked about their top tips for managing CF and wanted to share this with other parents to give them a head start. So there's also a section on that in the booklet written by parents. Parents shared that they wanted to see better represent representation of the CF community in the resource, so we listened and have included more diversity in terms of ethnic background, but also in terms of including more dad's voices in the resource and different family types such as single parents. This is both in the quotes and the stories we're sharing and in the photographs we're using. We actually recruited many families for the photo and video shoots from the initial focus groups too. And you can see one of those lovely families in this slide. Parents talked about the loneliness that a CF diagnosis can bring and about feeling daunted at being both a new parent, but also a new parent to a baby with a lifelong condition. To address this, we're currently working on a series of emails or e-newsletters that parents can sign up to receive to support them through that first year. They'll contain relevant information at key stages and signposts to things like our forum, our helpline and financial support. Not only will this helpfully help parents to feel supported, but will be a positive start to a lifelong relationship with the trust as their child grows. As well as the booklet, we are creating a series of web pages which will share different family stories about their CF diagnosis or shine a light on other aspects of having a young child with CF, such as juggling work, sharing the news with friends and family 
and taking your child out and about. We varied the way we present this content. So there'll be videos, blogs, web content, there's a diary, there's a letter, etc. So we can improve accessibility for as many people as possible. And this is all in response to parents on the focus groups telling us about their different preferences for engaging with information content and giving us ideas for this kind of spin-off content. We wanted there to be something for everyone. Finally, parents have reviewed the final draft of the booklet and their feedback has been taken in and the group will also comment on the actual design of the booklet, which is coming imminently. Um, I also don't have time to go into this today in detail, but the Trust Information Team has been awarded the PIF tick, which is a quality kite mark for trusted health information. And this means that we develop all of our resources by following the criteria of PIF tick, one of which is engaging in meaningful involvement with our community. Working on our information projects with the community gives us the confidence that what we're creating is actually meeting the needs of that community. Thank you very much. And I believe some of the links I talked about today will be put in the chat for you. Thank you. Thanks for that, Ali. And I'll pass over to, to Paul now. Hello, I'm Paul. I'm the Employment Advisor at the Trust. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so I'm here to talk to you about the Trust's employment service. It's called Work Forwards. Um, just see this. Uh, we have a quick poll for 30 seconds just to see what um, people know about Work Forwards already. So that should be on your screen. I've tried to make the questions as brief as possible so you don't have too much thinking time to do at this time of night. Maybe a few more seconds to fill that in. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. That gives me a good idea. Thank you. Oh, moving on. So the uh, service was launched actually one year ago today. So it's the first birthday of the project today. Um, it was launched in response to um, an identified need coming through in direct involvement with the CF community. And that was principally through our helpline via surveys that went out to the community in response to people telling us about some of the um, improvements that they've been uh, experiencing as a result of CAFTRIO and some of the changes in their plans to kind of change career direction and have more involvement with, with work. And the actual lottery bid that um, secured the money for the project was co-authored by somebody who has CF themselves. The project is funded by the lottery and the charity scope so we, we got input financially from both of those, those funders and the, it's an employment service for anyone who's personally living with or affected by CF, so that could be carers, family members, uh, people in direct kind of association with people living with CF. So there's a number of things that the service offers. Um, we do quite a lot of supported job searches, so for people changing careers or coming into work that need help looking for specific jobs in industry and then all the kind of traditional stuff like CVs and cover letters. Um, also around kind of people looking for flexible working to, for jobs that will fit around treatments that they need to do during the day. And we also help with things like reasonable adjust adjustments, workplace discrimination. And we have a project called the Helen Barrett Bright Ideas Award that um, helps people with CF get into self-employment. We run it, uh, the service is entirely online. 
So we run the service either by phone calls, uh, one-to-one coaching or group sessions. People can either self-refer directly and we'll put the um, email address in the chat shortly uh, via our helpline through a CF professional at their clinic or in direct association with, with a referral from a colleague within the trust. Um, due to time, I'm going to kind of end it there, but there's some of the, there are some of the um, contact details. I think the uh, workforce email will go in the chat as well. You can also look at our web pages. And finally, we do have a um, advisory group that feeds into work forward. So if any members of the community want to get directly involved, then you can get in touch with us on the work forward email address. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And a big thank you to Ali and Paul there uh, for, for those presentations. Um, I will, in the spirit of passing the baton between our, our multiple presenters, I will now uh, introduce uh, Gwyneth and Maria to speak to us about CF Storm. So uh, Gwyneth is the co-lead for um, the project and Maria also had an involvement role in there and, and has had uh, involvement in other areas as well. So they're both going to talk about their experience in, in CF Storm. So I'll, I'll hand over to Gwyneth initially. Thanks very much, Dan. Um, and thanks for the invitation to join this CF Live event. I was remembering as we were sitting here that when we did a CF Live event just on CF Storm in the past, there was actually a storm happening and at least one of the panel members on the call tonight had their window open and got a bit wet during that. So hopefully the weather will be kinder to us tonight. So um, I'm Gwyneth, I'm a paediatrician at Great Ormond Street Hospital and a researcher at UCL and I co-lead CF Storm with uh, Professor Kevin Southern, who's based at Alderhey Hospital and uh, University of Liverpool. So CF Storm, for those of you that haven't heard of it, is a, is a clinical trial that's running um, at the moment throughout the UK. Um, and it's for people with cystic fibrosis that are established on CAFTRIO, um, who are also on a, a daily mucoactive nebulizer. So by that, we mean either Dornase Alpha or DNAs on, or hypertonic saline, so the salty nebulizer on a daily basis. And what we're trying to understand is whether there's still a role for those types of nebulizers if you're on CAFTRIO or whether they can be safely stopped without affecting things like lung function. Um, when the study opened, we were um, open to those um, in age sort of 12 and above, but more recently, the uh, lower age for recruiting has gone down to six years, which has been really good in line with the sort of uh, lower age of licensing for CAFTRIO. And we've got um, around 480 people that, have either, uh, that are either currently participating or have participated in CF Storm now, which is really great. And we've got less than 100 people still to recruit to get to our target. But CF Storm is really a study that illustrates that throughout the whole um, process of a, of a clinical trial, right from thinking of the original ideas right through to carrying out the trial and then thinking about how you convey all the results of the trial and communicate the results through to the CF community. It's a, it's a, real, it's a study that really sort of shows how, how, that, how the patient community and the, um, their families can really be involved in that at all processes. And for CF Storm, the story starts really with the James Lind priority setting exercises that went on in cystic fibrosis, identifying that key priority of how can we safely uh, reduce treatment burn it, burden um, if for people living with cystic fibrosis. And of course, with CAFTRIO coming along and, and people start, we knew that people were starting to make decisions about maybe stopping some therapies, but not really knowing what the health consequences of that were. There was a real opportunity for a, a study like CF Storm to to come along to try and get some answers for the community to, to see um, whether we could help people in their decision making about, about these sorts of treatments. And actually the name for the, for the trial, so CF Storm came from um, uh, people uh, win, within the C, uh, CF Trust CTAP involvement group. So CF Storm stands for um, stopping treatments or reducing medication. So we were really grateful to the involvement team for their help with that. Um, and really on, they were really pivotal in, in helping us as a study team um, host some focus groups with members of the CF community to get sort of lived experience of, of what was really important on a kind of day-to-day -day basis in terms of treatments and what sort of treatments would be important to think about 
um, in terms of if we were thinking about stopping some treatments for people that were established on Keftrio, which type of treatments might be considered more burdensome or sort of um, impacting on daily routines, but that they might be happy to consider stopping within the context of a kind of well-conducted sort of say trial um, to see how that would impact on, on outcomes. And we got a real steer from the, the community that nebulizers such as DNAs and, and hypertonic saline were things that people would really um, welcome information on to help decision making about the whether they should continue taking those treatments or not and they would prefer to have a trial that looked at that sort of question rather than nebulized antibiotics which people might find even more burdensome but but were more reluctant to sort of um, have in the in one of these types of of studies so that gives a sort of flavor about how the we the within the planning stages of the trial we had some um involvement that was really key at designing the sorts of questions that we wanted to address in the trial but also we got a clear message about the trial not needing or not wanting to have extra study visits and being quite a low burden in itself so they were really important drivers as well and then with the trial being funded and being carried out we had real key involvement from the community in some of the key committees um, and the um, oversight that happens within the context of a clinical trial and also importantly to have communication going out to the community in terms of opportunities for becoming involved in the trial as participants um, and uh, and how we can really engage the community in trying to come into the trial um, and and disseminate information through those routes and moving forwards towards the um, when we start to think about the results of the trial and how we can convey those results to the community that will be another key opportunity for um, involvement as well. Um, and I want to um, hand over now to Maria, who is um, a, a, an excellent example of somebody from the community who has, um, has taken up the, the baton to become involved in, in a clinical trial and is, is really a, a great member of our trial management group in CF Storm. So Maria, over to you now to talk a bit about your journey and, and why you've, you've doing this. Oh, Thanks. Thank um, unfortunately, as part of my day job, I don't do any public speaking. <laughs> So you'll have to bear with me on this one. So I'll just basically tell you a little bit about myself and my involvement with CF. So obviously my name is Maria Pace and I have a son who's eight who has CF. And I also have a daughter who's eight. I've got twins, um, but only, only my son has CF. So um, yeah, so eight, nearly nine years ago, obviously found out, got the diagnosis. And I was like, whoa, we need to find a cure, we need to find a cure for this. Um, so I got heavily involved in raising money for the CF Trust because um, as most people know, it is just such, it can be such a terrible illness. So um, yeah, so I started doing that. And then um, throughout the journey, I obviously had lots of experience with the CF Trust. So using the helpline, using um, people to help with the DLA application, um, just so many things I can't remember. Um, and then unfortunately it's really hard to continue raising money, although we do still do, um, because you're asking the same people and there was an opportunity in 2021 to join a focus group. And I thought, right, I can give back to the CF Trust because they've helped us so much since uh, George's diagnosis. Uh, so I can I feel like I'm doing something as well and we're, we're still on this journey to get this cure um so yeah so um, I joined a couple of focus groups um about there's different ones CF branding there was one to do with priorities for funding and um interestingly one of the because it really makes you think about other things when you're part of these focus groups because other people experience different things um and one of the things which uh I became clear was um, the burden of CF and trying to make my son's life as easy as possible because the treatments are, are, are daily, aren't they? And their medications. So um, I was aware of CF Storm and that's exactly what one of one of my, um, I don't know, go what, I don't know how to describe it, but um, so I was like, wow, if, if George didn't have to do his nebulizer because he takes DNAs, that's fantastic. So unfortunately, we weren't able to get involved in the trial because of the hospital we're, we're with. Um, but there became an opportunity to um, join as a parent uh, representative. So I've spoken to Lorna previously and she gave she spoke about this opportunity. 
And to be honest, I was um, my experience with the involvement group was fantastic. Um, I'd get an email and say, what do you think about this? And I go, oh, I can't make it. I, I can't do that time. And they go, don't worry about it. So everything that I did, they were just grateful for. And even if I couldn't do something, they were like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So I have a job. I have a family. Um, time's obviously tight for everyone. And I could just they could just let me fit it around wherever, wherever I could. Um, so anyway, there was this opportunity to join as a parent representative for CF Storm. Um, and I was, to be honest, quite daunted because there's so many experts and that was part of this group. And then there was me. And I was like, well, um, so I spoke to Lorna and Lorna was like, but you are an expert because you're a parent and you know exactly what it is to be around to bring up somebody with CF. And these other experts don't know about that. So I, I could be this voice and I could just tell them what I already knew. I didn't have to learn anything. I could just say, oh, this is, it's like this, it's like that or whatever. So um, I could just really make a difference just with my, my skills that I already had, which I didn't even realize I had. So so yeah, so um, I became part of this group and it, it, it doesn't take a lot of my time, but I can still make a difference, which, which, which is just wonderful. Um, so yeah, so I'd just like to say if um, anybody's interested in getting involved, it's, it, it can be as much or as little as you want it to be because there's small opportunities and I'm sure there's massive ones, I've just not got involved in those ones. So um, definitely you could speak to me, um, maybe you could get my number through someone at um, CF Trust, but um, yeah, just definitely think about it and um, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's it that's me thank you thank you so much both that was uh, really really interesting to hear and, and kind of really really powerful there as well um maria so thank you um right i will now hand over to um rob who's the professor of respiratory medicine um in glasgow who's going to talk to us about involvement in his bronchoscopy research so good evening everyone um i don't have any slides you'd be pleased to know and um i was just going to tell you a little bit about the experience that i have had um, in recently taking part in an engagement exercise organised by um, the CF Trust. So as a bit of background, I'm, I'm a CF um, clinician and researcher. And I was just looking today at how long I've been doing CF research since, and it's I'm now, now been doing CF research for 20 years. So it's our 60th year of the CF Trust. And for 20 of those years, I can't quite believe it, I've been doing CF research. So why why did I need or why did I want to do an engagement exercise with with um, people from the CF community? Well, I always think that our research should be grounded in questions that are important um, from a scientific perspective, but also important to our CF community first and foremost. And due to us having a disease that has rapidly changed with new drugs, thankfully for most of our patients, but obviously not for all of our patients. Um, we've really seen the disease change. And from my perspective, I'd like to know how the biology of that disease has changed. And the only way to really find that out is by looking at things under a microscope. And in my case, I'm interested in how inflammation and infection are behaving in CF lungs now that we have a, a different um, disease pattern in a lot of our patients. So I wanted to find out from the CF community how they would feel about having a bronchoscopy, a telescope test, to look down into the lungs to take research samples. And it was really quite an interesting experience because I suppose I went into it thinking a lot of people would not want to even consider doing something such as having a bronchoscopy. And that's the sort of things that we get asked by the people reviewing the grants. Is, is your research program going to be feasible? And interestingly, um, all of the people on the call said they would be interested in having a bronchoscopy for research, but only if it had benefit for them in terms of their clinical disease as well, such as supplying microbiology samples, etc. And that was a real eye opener for me. And it's something that I've taken now um, into several uh, grant applications and also in, in any talk that I've actually given since the engagement exercise. I've also referred back to that evening where I did the where I did the engagement to say how important it was to know what our community with CF would like us to do in terms of research. And um, 
and will it, what sort of procedures would be acceptable. Um, and I suppose just a little bit about the experience overall, I found it fantastic. And that's another thing that I've been trying to put across to my research colleagues, because we all have to put um, a section in any grant that we write now, whether it's for a small amount of money or for, set for, for a, a several million pound grant, we have to put in information about how we've engaged with our target community that would be affected by our research. And I think a lot of people, and I was probably guilty of this in the past myself, will think they've been doing um, engagement work because particularly if we're clinicians, we see people in clinic, et cetera. But actually, now that I've done this process, it's allowed me to, to really fill out that section um, with a lot more depth and a lot more experience. And actually, the other thing that, that I felt was wonderful about the experience of, of doing the engagement exercise was getting to interact with people with CF in a different way than I would normally interact. So usually I'm the CF consultant who is asking questions about how someone's been, have you had an exacerbation, et cetera, et cetera. But to be the person on the other side of the table being asked the questions was really quite um, enjoyable. It's nice to be put on the spot when you do research and be asked tough questions. And the sort of questions I, would, I was being asked were the sort of questions I would expect to be asked by people who were working in the field or were reviewing my grants. And it was just great to sit for an hour and online and just chat to people about the research that we do and how we want it to help the um, CF community and how we might get there. So that's all I'm going to say at the moment. Happy to take any questions later on. I will be continuing to tell everyone about how important and how um, enjoyable engagement exercises are. And um, yeah, and we are hosting the European CF conference in Glasgow this year. So we will also be mentioning engagement a lot at that, that event. Thanks. Lovely. Thanks for that, Rob. That's um, that's really, really great to hear about how it's been valuable for your work. And uh, always good to have another advocate um, for, for involvement as well. Um, we're next going to speak to Sean, who is uh, doing some research in uh, pseudomonas detection. So I'm going to pass over to you, uh, Sean, to tell us about your experience. Excellent. Um, thank you very much for asking me to come along. And uh, I do have slides because I don't I quite have the same confidence to speak without them at the moment. Um, so I've been um, in the CF kind of research area as part of my job for the last five years. Um, and as part of that, I've been developing this kind of novel detection for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So I'm just going to give a little bit of background before going over my experience with the involvement groups and what I've gained from it and also what has been the result of it as well, what we've done with that information. So the background of what we've been doing is essentially looking for novel biomarkers, so biomolecules that are produced by pseudomonas that we could detect. This was done in a large clinical trial, which we were then able to prove works in non-sputum biofluids, um, and we're granted intellectual property on that. In the intervening years, so the last five years, we've been working on developing lab-based assays and now lately transferring this into a lateral flow device. So that's all very well. This comes from a research angle. Um, researching in a university environment, not being a clinician, uh, we don't have that engagement with um, people with CF daily. And also, we just don't have the, the same interface between the CF trust. Um, so how did I come to be involved with the involvement group? Well, it was through a scheme, so it was run by the National Biofilms Innovation Centre, delivered by iCare, which is Innovation to Commercialisation of University Research. Um, and through that, it gets you out into the, it, it's, it's more kind of market discovery, research validation. So you do your research on the actual problem, but you don't actually think, like, how can it be applied? What's the uptake of it? And this is really important when you try and commercialise research, which is what I'm doing. Um, so it got us me out of the lab and into the community. And as part of that, I went to the European um, CF conference in Rotterdam and met Lorna. And we got talking and uh, I realized that it'd be a very good opportunity for me to get involved with involvement and um, to help shape and ask questions, but then also be asked questions around the assumptions I'd made on how the test that we were developing would be deployed. Um, so, I mean, I undertook informal focus groups um, and have continued to do so to date up to these kind of numbers with people with CF, family of people with CF, and also with clinicians. So, I mean, what have I learned from this? Um, quite a few of the assumptions I made 
as a team, uh, myself and as a team were wrong. Um, we had assumptions on the type of biofluid we would use for this test. We had assumptions based on how frequent people would do this test, would they want to do it at home in the clinic. And we also had some conflicting um, kind of feedback on how we were thinking of deploying the test as well. Um, and that ultimately leads us to those insights gave us a better understanding on how to design the test um, and how often we would use the test potentially. Uh, and that all feeds into, in a commercialization point of view, from the research going forward, how we approach that in a regulatory manner as well, because it gets very uh, difficult to change those things once you've gone down those paths without causing a lot of extra time and ultimately money uh, in that area. And one of the most insightful things with me was actually the information we asked for, we got way above and beyond what we thought we may get. Um, I took part in these expecting to get information that was critical to what I wanted at that point in time. But then I realized through engagement with these focus groups that there's a lot of information we didn't even know about that was really important, but then also extra and you know insightful information. You know, what is it like to be a family member caring for a child with CF? What are the worries, the psychology behind it? And, and these things all really provided great insight to why we were doing this uh, and also considering things we hadn't considered. And one of the biggest killers um, when we're trying to commercialize research, especially when you're in that later stages, is those unknown unknowns are the one thing that will seriously derail what you're doing and can essentially evolve into a situation where you don't have a viable product, which is obviously a massive undertaking. So with that, we've managed to change what we're doing with our research. So it's completely reshaped what we've done with the design of the lateral flow. And we've also included this information in Innovate UK grant applications. Uh, and the result of that is that I've been awarded um, an exploit funding grant. You know, I probably would not be in that situation to form a spin-up company starting next month, well, the 1st of April, um, if it wasn't for the information these focus groups had provided. So I think it's, it's you know, I'm very grateful and my deepest gratitude, obviously, for the, myself and the team that have been behind this for well over 12 years um, to the insights and information from the focus group. Lovely. Thanks so much for that, Sean. That's, that's really interesting to hear. Um, Right, so we are we're rattling through the agenda and we are now going to be speaking to uh, Nicola, who is another one of our involvement group uh, members, who's going to talk about her experience being involved in research as well. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Nicola and I have CF and I've been involved in various trust activities for the last eight years, I think. Um, so my route into involvement very much began when I joined the Youth Advisory Group in 2016. So this is known as YAG for short um, and is a group for people aged between 14 and 25 who either have CF or who have an association with CF to come together and directly influence the work at the Trust by making sure that young people and their concerns are heard. So we would meet monthly and discuss issues affecting young people within the CF community and then co-design and facilitate projects related to those issues. So during my time at YAG, we did a real diverse range of projects, which was really great as it is. It always felt like we were tackling something different. Um, for example, in response to CAFTRIO being released, we launched a survey where young people could voice their experiences and feelings regarding CAFTRIO. And then we shared the results through the youth Instagram page to really recognize and validate everyone's differing opinions. And likewise, during the COVID lockdowns, we ran a More Than CF campaign, which encouraged young people to share and showcase their talents, their hobbies, their interests online in a fun and kind of positive way during what was, you know, a difficult time for a lot of people. Um, involvement with YAG also led to some really cool opportunities, such as uh, participating in an online exercise class that appeared on BBC One, BBC One The One Show. So that was really cool. Um, and YAG was was just a brilliant space to meet other young people with CF, really, and was kind of the first time I'd ever had honest conversations with people that really understood CF in its entirety, which was so important and reflective as a as you know as, as a young person coming to terms with everything that that CF entailed. And those connections and friendships 
have really lasted too. So for example, we have YAG alumni game nights. We actually have one in a few weeks actually. Um, so I've been able to forge a lovely supportive network from my involvement with the trust. Um, it was also a great chance to kind of learn more about what the trust is and how it operates. And for me, YAG was really, I'd say foundational in kind of encouraging me to become more active in the CF involvement space and also in advocacy and advisory roles more generally, which I now do, which I do now in my professional life as a PhD researcher, where I'm on several EDI related committees. So not only has involvement had that, you know, reciprocal benefit, but it's also helped to steer my own interests in the volunteering and charity sector. So that was my first experience with involvement. And then when I aged out of YAG, sadly, I joined the involvement group and then more recently the information support and programs advisory group, which has only just got up and running. And whereas YAG focused quite specifically on youth engagement and empowerment, the involvement group has a much more broad spectrum of activities and no kind of fixed monthly meetings. So how it operates is that involvement opportunities are sent across via email and you can you know, view these at your leisure, ask more details and really pick and choose what you're most interested in or what your time most allows for. So I've also <clears throat> found that the involvement group looks to influence you know, many different areas. So you'll be volunteering to help not just trust members, but also researchers, clinicians. So you really do get to connect with a host of different stakeholders. It's also a really flexible network with varying levels of time commitment, as Maria was saying previously. You know, some activities will only be, you know, an hour focus group at a fixed time, whereas others will be to look through documents which you can fit in around your daily schedule. And participation also requires, you know, no prior experience other than your own lived experience with CF. So it's all super accessible. So I've taken part in many different activities within the involvement group, for example, giving feedback on fact sheets, reviewing community documents, inputting on research project plans to help make sure CF studies meet the needs of the community and can be easily accessed and understood by the community as well. Focus groups are also a common way to get involved. For example, I once joined a session with the marketing team to bounce around ideas for the CF Truths Awareness campaign. So it was great to you know, see the end product of that and how well it was received too. I've also joined other focus groups where we would discuss the content of CF Life and one with paediatric teams to help identify issues around transition. So there's, you know, there's always a constant stream of different involvement activities that seek to address, you know, varying community and research interests. So I'd say there's definitely something for everyone. Um, and each, you know, involvement opportunity really allows you to have a tangible impact on the trust and its work. And uh, finally, I think, you know, the biggest thing I've learned from my various involvement activities within the trust is just how important and impactful involvement can be. You know, the CF community has such a diverse voice and such a rich range of experience that it's paramount to have that community involvement, which I think is just so evident in tonight's event. No input is ever too small. And I think, you know, CF patients, friends, family members are best placed to provide that lived experience and insight that really can help to steer and influence both work and research done within the CF Trust. So yeah, I'd really encourage anyone that wants to add their voice to, to the discussion to do so. I think I found it to be a, a really rewarding and fun experience. So yeah, that's kind of my involvement journey in a five minute nutshell. Brilliant, thanks so much for that, Nicola. That was, that was really great to hear. Um, so we are at the, the Q&A uh, section and I want a big thank you um, again to all of our panel um, for sharing their experiences. Um, so if anyone has got any questions um, that's listening to this now that wants to drop them, drop them in the chat, chat then please do. Um, I think we have got some questions that were um, submitted uh, beforehand that I'll, I'll pick up initially and then obviously we can see um, how we go with others afterwards. Um, so I think there's a, a question really for... Um, the, the researchers, I guess, that are on the call, really. Um, so uh, Rob, uh, Sean, and, and, and Gwyneth, um, just if there's, if there was a specific kind of a light bulb moment um, that you, you can think of in terms of when you could really see the difference that the involvement had made or was making to the work that you've you've done. Um, I don't know if any of you wanted to to step in on that subject. I, I could just say Rob, something. And yeah, start go off. Rob. 
Yeah, I think the I think the light bulb moment for me was was really the the discussion about bronchoscopy when, um, when everyone on the call said, well, we would be really happy to do a research test if you could also make it something that could be used for our clinical that be useful for us clinically as well, and actually it changed the way I thought about a lot of the stuff we were planning to do in research because <clears throat> often we'll try and get a research sample as part of a clinical test from an excess sample and it sometimes works sometimes doesn't but actually if we can frame our research in a way that when we're answering a research question we can directly benefit our people with cf there and then when we're doing that research test which may take years to have an impact but then have something that helps there and then such as microbiology so for me that was a, a big moment and it's made it really easy for me now to conceptualize how we put that into to grant applications yeah, very important. Thanks, Rob. Um, Sean, Gwyneth, I didn't know if, if you want to come in on that. I think I can go. I mean, I, I mean there, there's just been so many really good in, examples of involvement. I think with CS Storm, it's maybe difficult to pinpoint them, but I just think the insight from people with lived experience for things like what, how, like numbers from lung function, what they mean and what people might think was okay in terms of being in a study and how they might change over time and and they put like when you're thinking about different treatments in a trial that was that was really sort of really key in terms of the driver to look at both uh, DNAs and the anti-photonic saline at the same time and not the nebulized antibiotics so there's been some real key things that have driven the shape of CF storm cut that have come directly from the community so that's been really great yeah, thanks for this yeah that just echo what Gwyneth is saying as well. I mean, I've had quite a number of insights and it's hard to pinpoint because there's been so many of them over the focus groups that I've been doing. Um, and I, I mentioned it during my little five minutes, but I mean, we've had so many insights and I've had so many personal kind of insights on how there's a difference between doing the research in a lab. I'm not a clinician. I don't see people with CF day to day. Um, and it really kind of, it changes how you view what you're doing as well. And I think that's been a really big thing for me. And it's given me such a big drive to do the commercialization route and take it down that because I can see the benefit it could potentially have as well. So it's not it's not just the benefit it gives to the research, but also the benefit it gives to me as an individual to do what I want to do as well. Brilliant. Now that's great to hear. I'm just having a look through some of the other questions that we've uh... We've had through, and I think um, that, that Nicola actually touched upon um, this in the um, in her uh, chat about her experience. But I, I think there was a question that, that we'd had submitted previously. Um, I, I guess this perhaps would be for Lorna, maybe just to clarify, but how people go about hearing about the different involvement opportunities. Yeah, sorry, just put my camera on. Yeah, so um, there's the option to register for the involvement group, and we're going to put a link up at the end in the in the final slides. Um, and when you've registered, we actually send out regular emails, opportunities um, that you can read through, pick between, um, as Maria and Nicola have both said. Um, there's no obligation to join those. Um, so you can pick and choose depending on what the topics are, what interests you, what time you have, um, whether it fits into your life at that moment. Um, and it doesn't always have to be a focus group. You know, we've spoken a lot about the focus groups this evening and they are actually really enjoyable opportunities. It's a real privilege to bring people with CF together and bring CF families together when we know that that um, doesn't always present itself. Um, but it it's not always about focus groups. Um, myself, Louise, Claire, who are on the call today and Maddie, um, you know, we can also offer the opportunity to have a chat one to one. Um, there's also the opportunity to review documentation. So it might be something you prefer to like take away, have a read and give some feedback. Um, and some of that can be quite complex. Um, it can be um, clinical trial information that will form part of the um, information packs that goes to potential participants. And we want to ensure that that's written clearly in a clear um, manner that is understandable and helps people make those decisions about taking part in clinical trials. And we provide templates, um, guidance notes to help you through that review as well. Um, obviously, we've mentioned on the poll um, that all the different um, variety of aspects that of involvement 
Um, and it could be that you wanted to join a committee and, you know, join a program of work. Um, and they say, obviously, that is a little bit more of a commitment um, to regular meetings. But again, you know, the, the choices are um, huge. There is a variety, you know, great variety. It can be as little or as much as you want. But I guess the key part is register and then we can send you the information and you can pick and choose from that. Lovely, thanks, Lauren. I think it's really important to have that flexibility, isn't it? As it's been identified um, already in the other chats as well. I've got a million questions, particularly that I'd love to uh, address to Nicola uh, and Maria, but obviously I'm aware we're running out of time. So I'm just having a look at some of the last questions we've got in the chat in terms of the way uh, that people can get involved. Obviously, focus groups are right at the top there, and we've talked about those in a bit, but I think um, as Maria and Nicola and, and Lauren and more recently as well have identified, there are lots and lots of different ways that people can um, get involved. So, you know, really, really encourage anybody that's got an interest um, to, to obviously find out more information on the Trust <coughs> website and, and get registered. Um, it's really, really important that we have that. And I think, as has been touched upon, there is so much flexibility as well. So people shouldn't feel overawed um, about what it might, uh, you know, mean. And I think we've had some really, really powerful presentations tonight about, um, you know, researchers and um, perhaps not necessarily knowing what involvement is going to, to look like and then you know kind of obviously really really appreciating the value of that and um, as they've worked through their own uh, projects and then obviously um, you know the members of our community as well who perhaps didn't necessarily know what it might look like to be involved in research and um, the really the value that they've had as well so I hope that provides some reassurance to people who might be watching this tonight and not 100% sure and um, you know what, what involvement might look like for them but I'll just encourage people to get involved and um, again just a huge thank you to our speakers for your time it's really really interesting to hear like i said i wish we had more hours of this and um, to hear the recording will be going out um shortly afterwards to to people that have registered and there's also be a questionnaire that we'd ask that um, people would uh, fill in as well that i think is going to get posted in the chat box as well but i'm sure that'll be coming out via email um if not and i will hand over to louise for the last 60 seconds <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for chairing, and um, thanks to our panel of speakers and to everyone for joining this evening. It's been a real privilege to hear how the lived experience with CF is so vital in informing the work of the Trust and future research. Um, before I close, I just want to share details of a few involvement opportunities that we have coming up. So we have our next quarterly community catch up on Monday, the 11th of March at 11am for an hour. We're hosting this quarterly community catch up over Teams and this will be a social space to chat with others in the CF community. We'd love to see you there. Please get in touch if you'd like to attend. We also have a focus group coming up on infection prevention and control on Monday the 25th of March 6.30 to 8pm. We would like to better understand your thoughts and feelings around infection prevention and control and its importance among the wider community Sharing your thoughts will help us to develop guidelines on this topic. Please do get in touch if you'd like to attend. And you can get in touch with us through our involvement page on the Trust website or via email, details on the slide and in the chat. And just a few other Trust events to mention. The fundraising team have a list of events that you can take part in. And again, details are on the slide and you can sign up via the link. CF Live will be back in the spring and details of this will be on our website. And finally, as we mark the 60th anniversary of Cystic Fibrosis Trust, keep an eye on our website for new opportunities to get involved. The Trust is running a hybrid award ceremony in November with eight categories and awards available, spanning all areas of the CF community. We would like everyone to nominate someone they think is worthy of an award and more details will be out next week. As you can see, we have a range of involvement opportunities available. Please do get in touch and enjoy and join our involvement group. We would really love to hear from you. Thank you and good night.